this is the part one of KPSC Junior Instructor Electronics Previous Year Question Discussion Series. We are going to see the previous year questions of 2017 examination of Junior Instructor Electronics. Okay. So, we are going to see some questions in this video. The first question is, you will be seeing the questions on board. A good quality or a good power supply should have load regulation not more than dash. So, it is asking regarding the load regulation of a good power supply. Okay. So, before seeing the value of load regulation, let us see what is actually load regulation and line regulation. These are the two terms which we hear, right? So, line regulation and load regulation. Line regulation means it is the ability of the power supply to maintain its specif specified or specific output voltage over the changes in the input voltage. That is, even if there is some changes in the input voltage happening, if it is uh, maintaining the constant output voltage, that is called line regulation. Okay, so let us discuss about the two main type of regulations, line regulation and the second one is load regulation okay so line regulation means keeping the output voltage same or constant even if there is some changes in input line that is input voltage okay so that is called line regulation now load regulation means it is the ability of the power supply to maintain the specific output voltage given that there is some changes happening in the load. So, even if there is some changes happening to the load, if it is able to uh, maintain the specified or specific output voltage, it is called load regulation. And the equation for finding load regulation is load regulation is given by V no load. I'll write it below. Okay, so the equation for load regulation is V no load minus V full load by VFL into 100. It is actually given or expressed in percentage. And this is the equation for finding the load regulation. Okay. So, these are the basic concepts of and, uh, sorry, line and load regulation. Okay. So, you should be knowing about what is actually the definition of line regulation and load regulation. Here, the question is asking regarding the load regulation. A good power supply should have load regulation not more than, correct answer is 0. 0 0.10 percentage is the load regulation for a good power supply okay so that is load regulation value so the correct answer for the first question is option a next second question second question is Question number 2. The RMS voltage of a transformer secondary is 6 volt. Its peak value is dash. Okay, it is asking regarding the uh, relation between peak voltage and RMS voltage. So, RMS voltage is given. V RMS is equal to 6 volt. V peak we need to find. So, V peak is equal to V, v RMS into root 2 is the equation okay v rms into root 2 so in order to find v rms we actually take the relation v rms is equal to v p by root 2 right so in order to find v peak v rms into root 2 is the relation and here rms value is 6 volt so 6 into root 2 that is correct answer coming will be 8.5 approximately will be the value for that is 8.5 volt is the value for the peak voltage coming which is option c is the correct answer okay the third question is when a diode is tested using the ohm meter it indicates high resistance in both direction the condition of the diode is dash so when the diode is tested with the help of an ohm meter okay so a diode is tested with the help of an ohm meter and both sessions or both terminals of the diode are having high resistance. So, if it is having high resistance in both direction means the diode is in dark state. That is a question. A open, B short, C leaky, D good. So, when it is 
having high resistance in both uh, directions means it is actually open okay so since it is open it is having high resistance it indicates high resistance in both direction means it, it is open okay correct answer is option a fourth question which of the following is a polarized capacitor it is a theory question which of the following capacitor out of the given option is a polarized one a paper capacitor b plastic film c ceramic capacitor d tantalum electrolyte capa electrolytic capacitor the correct answer is option d is the correct answer tantalum electrolytic capacitor is the polarized one okay correct answer is option d fifth question the question is actually connected with counters consider that if m and n are the modulus of any counters then overall modulus of the cascaded counter is given by dash a mn b 2 raised to mn c mn square d m by n the whole raised the whole square here consider that you are have you are having two counters one is having a modulus value m second is one second is having modulus value n so when they are cascaded means the overall overall modulus will be equal to mn is the value okay mn the product of the individual modulus will give you the overall modulus okay correct answer is option a so for this uh, examination of junior instructor you can actually expect questions from medium level to easy level questions will be not very difficult it will be easy only okay moderate to easy level questions you can expect so next question ic7476 is a dash d flip flop rs flip flop jk flip flop ms flip flop correct answer is ic7476 is actually a jk flip flop okay the correct answer is jk flip flop which is option c is the correct answer next question the seventh question a binary number 10101 is equivalent to decimal number dash okay so 10101 so it is 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 square 2 cube 2 raised to 4 okay so 0 1 2 3 4 so this is how you represent the position and the weights now i'm going to take out these values so 2 raised to 4 plus 2 square plus 1 16 plus 4 plus 1 and the correct answer coming is 21 okay correct answer is 21 to the base of 10 it is actually a decimal number so correct answer is option d is the correct answer which is 21 okay next question eighth question actually again question from number system the number 12 to the base 8 in decimal so you have to convert this octal number to the base 8 means it is actually an octal number you have to convert this octal number to decimal form now how to convert an, a number in octal to decimal you have to again take the powers and multiply it so the number is actually 12 the position values are 0 and 1 so 8 raised to 1 and 8 raised to 0 so 1 into 8 raised to 1 plus 2 into 8 raised to 0. So 8 plus 2 into 1 that is 10. Okay. So the number coming is 10. That is 10 to the base 10. Since it is a decimal number, base is also 10. Correct answer is option C is the correct answer. Okay. So correct answer for this eighth question. Which is actually the last question that we are going to discuss in this video. The next questions, next set of questions will be seen in the next video. Okay. So here the correct answer is option C. Okay. So I am really hoping that you found the questions useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also share with all your friends who is preparing for the junior instructor examinations. A lot of people have actually asked me to do preparation classes for junior instructor. So if the questions were useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Also share with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.